Hi everyone, I'm Ryan Alice, and I'm doing a video project on all that I've learned by 28. Now, I'm going to talk about global KPIs. KPI stands for Key Performance Indicator, and it's a way of simply measuring a statistic and tracking performance and progress over time. I think it's important to think about how humans are doing as a species, because sometimes with all the negative headlines that we read in the paper or hear on TV or read on the internet, it's hard to know the answer to this very important question. How is our species doing? How are we doing as a human species? You often will see negative headlines on the internet, news, or TV because negative headlines sell newspapers. Negative headlines attract the interest and attention because at the end of the day, one of our most primal instincts is safety and survival. And so we're drawn to headlines that have a negative slant. Oftentimes, you will see headlines about someone losing their life, but you won't see headlines about some of the more important improvements that our species is making, particularly over time. Because if the news didn't happen yesterday, then is it really newsworthy? So often there's a lack of information out there about trends that are happening to our species over the course of a few years or a couple decades. And so what I've tried to do is establish five metrics, five basic key KPIs, that if we agreed on, could tell us over time how our species is doing. And of course, there are way more than five KPIs that would, could be used to say how we're doing overall as a species. But I think it's important to select a few and go from there. So let's, for the sake of this example, establish the five following indicators of human progress. First, let's look at life expectancy, how long an average person can expect to live. Next, let's look at infant mortality, the number of uh, individuals under five years old that die before they reach their fifth birthday. Next, let's reach, look at per capita income, the average or the mean av income throughout the world in terms of what someone makes per annum, per year. Next, let's look at the percentage that are in extreme poverty. Uh, the number percentage of poverty is defined as under $2 a day. Percentage in extreme poverty is defined as under $1.25 per day. Purchase power parity adjusted. So it's the same basket of goods that you might buy here in America that might be bought anywhere else. And it's weighted to be adjusted apples to apples. And last, let's look at carbon dioxide and the parts per million of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And that'll be an important correlation with environmental progress as a species. So let's look first at life expectancy. Since 1970, over the last 42 years, life expectancy has improved about 17%, from about 59 to over 69, getting close to 70. Now, in the United States, our life expectancy is closer to 77. And so this, of course, is a worldwide view. On average, someone being born today in 2012 can expect to live about 70. Uh, regardless of where they are in the world, some, some places higher, some places lower. The fact that this is improving is showing that it, it, there are many advances in healthcare, in nutrition, in education that are enabling us to simply live longer lives. The next statistic that I think is really important is infant mortality. And this is measured on every 1,000 births. So back in 1970, out of every 1,000 births, 140 now those infants would die by the age of five. By 2010, that dropped 59% to 58 out of 1,000. Now that's still 5.8%, which is too high. Here in America, we have inf we've had infant mortality levels under 20 or under 2% for quite some time. But we are making tremendous progress as a species in increasing the life expectancy of our most vulnerable children and infants. This is great progress as a species. Next, let's look at an economic factor. Let's look at per capita income. Now, this has been inflation adjusted, which means it's looking at constant dollars. In this case, since we're comparing 1970 to 2010, we're looking at constant two year $2,000. And you can see that since 1970, over the last 40 years, the average human being has a per capita per annual income 
83% higher, going from about $3,400 in 1970 to about 60, about a little over $6,000 in 2010. That's a great improvement. And the reality is, is that although this is the mean, the median is much lower, yet the median is also improving. So this is great progress, this is great demonstration of human progress over time. Let's look at a second economic factor. Let's look at extreme poverty. Because it's not just what the average person has or, or what the median person has. We often have to look at the most vulnerable in our society to really determine how are we making progress. Since 1981, when the World Bank started tracking poverty on a global basis, the percentage of humans in extreme poverty, those living under $1.25 per day, have declined from over 51% of the population to under 20% of the population. Now, the fact that we still have one in five human beings living under $1.25 per day is not good. In fact, I'd say that's terrible, particularly considering the opportunities and resources that we have in many parts of the world. I think here is a statistic, though, in which we can actually are, are making tremendous progress and can actually eliminate in the years ahead. So if you can go think back now to maybe the late 18th century, the late 1700s, and you think back to the kings and the queens and the empires of that time, if you were a king in, say, the late 18th century, you did not even have close to a portion of access to the resources that the average human being has today. We now have the internet, we now have television, we now have radio, we have so much human invention and innovation that's happened in the last couple of hundred years. And so back in 1800, about 99% of the world lived on under $1.25 per day as is defined in today's dollars. And today, 19.6% live on under $1.25 a day. There is a lot of extreme poverty out there, but we're making great progress in reducing it as a species. Now, on those first four KPIs, as a human species, we've made tremendous progress. We owe so much to those that have come before us to help create a generation that now has the opportunity to create a world in which everyone has access to their basic human needs. However, there's one major threat to almost all of our human progress. And that's where we look at this fifth and important KPI. And we've made all this progress except for annual carbon dioxide output. A related statistic we have to look at related to annual CO2 output is the parts per million in the atmosphere of carbon. Today, there are about 395 carbon dioxide parts per million parts in the atmosphere. And since 1970, that's up 21%. Now when you look at temperatures and how they've changed globally, the average surface temperature since 1970 has gone up almost one full degree centigrade. And in fact, it's up a full centigrade degree since 1905. This is something we have to watch very closely. So now that we've measured these five global human KPIs, let's give our parents a report card. Oftentimes our parents get to give us a report card, but for once, let's give them one. Let's take a look at each of these five human KPIs and give our parents a letter grade on how they've done the last 40 years. In terms of life expectancy, we all have 17% higher life expectancy. That is an amazing change for just one generation. That's an A. Infant mortality, 59% lower. An amazing one generation improvement in reducing the number of children under five that pass away needlessly. That is an A or an A+. The third one is per capita income. And in one generation, we've increased per capita income on an inflation-adjusted, PPP-adjusted basis by 83%, nearly doubling in just 40 years. That's amazing. Now, the percentage in extreme poverty has also been reduced from over 50% in 1970, or excuse me, in 1981, when we first started tracking this data, to under 20% today. That's 62% lower. Now I give it a B though because living in a world in which one in five people live under $1.25 per day is not a world that I think is worthy of what we can achieve as a species. And I think in the years ahead we can uh, eliminate extreme poverty. So that's a B. And then finally, CO2 emissions, carbon dioxide emissions, are now double what they were 40 years ago, 97% higher. 
Now, we have much more science today that uh, is showing us how critically important it is to slow down and to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide emissions that are going out into the atmosphere in terms of the effect on temperature and what we'll be able to see in terms of sea level rising and changing of the weather over the next few decades. We'll talk about this in the coming section on climate change, but this is definitely an F. Thanks for watching this section on global KPIs, and thanks for helping think from a, a broad perspective about how we as a species can track some important metrics to determine our progress. Talk to you next time.